Hello, I'm Peter Kenworthy. I'm sitting in for the normal star of this show, Colin Sullivan. And I'm Pepper Raper, and this is Almost Live, a weekly show designed to give you the who's who and what's what in Telerat and Mountain Village. In this week's show, we'll join Catherine Warren, who will give us an update on the local arts and music scene, and we'll have conversations with former CIA operative Bob Bear, and with Troy Schumacher, who's the director and choreographer for the Ballet Collective that'll be performing at the Palm Theater. We'll take a look at Profile Pieces for Babies of the Bush, a unique mountain village store that works for the protection of endangered species in Africa, as well as the Telluride Music Store. We'll also join Patrick Legans, the wine geek food freak, who's going to teach us how to make a wonderful summer hors d'oeuvre out of roasted red peppers. In our Retro Ride segment, we're going to go back to 2015 for the AHA Art Auction, where Jewel regaled the audience with not just singing, but wait for it yodeling. And we're also going to take a look at a piece that Tayride TV made with some local fourth graders about the importance of not drinking bottled water. And last but not least, we'll give you a chance to practice a calming breath exercise with our favorite local yogini, Barbara Glanzing. Now let's join Peter and Catherine for the Warren Commission. Thank you, Pepper. I am here at the historic Sheridan Opera House with none other than Catherine Warren, who's going to bring us her Warren Commission. Yes, we've got kind of a mellow week compared really? to previous weeks. Yeah, There's still fun to be had. Last week you were doing the hashtag <laughs> Survive July thing. What's going on? Yeah, I think this weekend is like just regroup a little bit, take a breather, mm, <laughs> go enjoy some live music, uh -huh. and then uh, gear up for next week's Jazz Fest, which, Sounds you know, good. we it's nice to take a little break before the madness Sounds continues. Sounds like a plan. Do tell us what's in the yes, black Yes, on Friday we have a special uh, show at 1 p.m. at the Sheridan Opera House. It's our summer spectacular. It's a free play. It's a mini production of Alice in Wonderland. 18 uh, kids ages 8 to 12 have been in the Opera House all week long. They're really only in there from 9 to 1, so kind of half days. Right. But it probably seems a lot longer. Yes, <laughs> for Leah Nicola, our YPT director. She's totally rocking it with these kids and they're putting together a full well a mini production but 45 minutes choreography dancing How cool. all the things and uh, families are encouraged to come join us it's at 1 p.m. and it is free we'll be opening doors Can at 1245 if you don't have the answer sure. please feel free to say Peter I have no idea <laughs> but one of the things that always impresses me about the young people's theater productions are the costumes mm -hmm. do they do they, are, do they keep all the costumes year to year? Do they buy them new every year? Do they make them? How does that all work? Uh, I do have the answer for that. It depends on each show. So sometimes, depending on the setting, we can order clothes even off of Amazon, uh -huh. if, depending on if it's just like modern day kids show. Or for um, Mary Poppins and James and the Giant Peach, we rent our costumes from this fabulous costume house out of Denver. And then you send them back when you're we done. We send them back. Perfect. And it's great because we've got limited space. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we will hire local costumers to make our costumes. Mm -hmm. But the renting is the best bet because mm -hmm. we can get exactly what we need yeah. for that show, that classic Mary Poppins look or the ant costume mm -hmm. or whatever else for yeah. our other place. I'm glad I took advantage of the opportunity because yeah. it's been one of those questions that's always been in the back uh, of my mind and I never found the right time or place to ask it. So. Well, now you know, folks. Now, know. now, <laughs> now you know, know Peter. <laughs> um, later on Friday night, we have Donovan Daly's Speakeasy Jazz Quartet at the Phoenix Bean. It's a free show. They play out in the back patio. It's become one of my favorite summertime activities because you can go get either coffee or cocktail, depending on what you need and then food as well so it's just all the things so combined the liberty in one. has a back patio i'm sorry i meant the phoenix bean oh yeah okay. so the coffee shop yeah great i wish yeah. the liberty they've got a, they've got a, yeah, i was gonna say wow that's news yeah you heard it here first <laughs> surprise guys it's actually the alley mm -hmm. no <laughs> just kidding uh then on saturday night we have kenny goldman playing jazz piano at the liberty Oh my gosh, I did it again at the Phoenix <laughs> Bean <laughs> at 6.30. And then on Saturday night at the Opera House, we've got a fabulous show, the show I've been looking forward to all summer long personally. It's Devotchka playing at 9 p.m. Um, some folks may know them. They uh, scored and wrote the soundtrack to Little Miss Sunshine. They're a fabulous indie rock band with yeah, some Eastern very European cool, influences. Very cool. And I noticed you never mix up the Opera House with other venues. <laughs> 
Interesting how that works. Yep, yep, good call. Uh, <laughs> folks uh, watching from home, I work at the Sheridan Opera House, <laughs> so it's uh, wear several hats. And uh, then at the Sheridan, historic Sheridan bar, we have the Telluride Jazz All Stars on Tuesday. So please note we have nothing on Sunday. That's sort of our fun, nice regroup day for downtime locals and visitors alike. Um, Telluride Jazz All Stars are playing at the Sheridan bar both Tuesday and Wednesday as part of the sort of lead up into the Jazz Fest. The Jazz All-Stars are a group of students who come in from all around the country to learn jazz. And even jazz. all around the world, I think, uh, yeah. right? And um, so they'll be sort of showcasing their immense talent and uh, what they've learned. And some of these, some previous Jazz All-Stars end up playing the main right. stage of Jazz right. Fest. they're back. So it's a really cool progression. It but is. we can talk more about Jazz Fest next uh, week. No doubt we will. <laughs> and then uh, Telluride Gold Kings play on Tuesday and Wednesday at 6.30 at the Phoenix and, Bean. And who are the Telluride Gold Kings? They are a group of uh, local men. I only know Steve Green and Ashley Bowling's names off the top of my head. Do you know the others? Yeah, there's another one, and I'm not coming up with it. How embarrassing. Well, Sorry they're fabulous musicians. <laughs> Go check them out at the Phoenix Bean. They've picked up Tuesday night's um, slot that uh, Porch Couch left open due to some new opportunities for that band and so they do the double feature at the phoenix bean and i spent th i was there on uh, fourth of july listening to the gold kings and it's a mix of covers uh rock covers and originals what does ashley do i didn't even realize that ashley bowling who's a man of many talents yeah was a musician he's a drummer he's a drummer. among other things maybe but i saw oh, him on cool. drums <laughs> good all right good um and then next wednesday if you're still in town we've got the sunset concert series with their weekly installment 6 to 8 p.m. in Sunset Plaza, just off of the Chandala and underneath the gondola in Mountain Village. And this week's artist, uh, or band, excuse me, is Old Salt Union. They're sort of a bluegrass folk indie rock conglomerate, and uh, they sound fabulous on Spotify. Wow, you, you, you started out by saying it was kind of a quiet time, <laughs> but that sounds like a lot of activity to me in the yeah, music world. Yeah, I guess I meant quiet because there's no major festivals, yeah, yeah, but there's still true. plenty to do. Yeah, good. Catherine, as always, thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And now, please stay tuned. We're going to go to our wine geek food freak, Chef Patrick Legans, who's going to show us a red pepper dish. And then we're going to go to Babies of the Bush. Hi, I'm Patrick Legans, the wine geek food freak. Today, I wanted to show you something with the red bell pepper. Part of the bell pepper family, obviously, green peppers, yellow peppers, orange peppers, red peppers, all part of the same pepper just different stages of ripeness. So I'm gonna bake these in the oven, 375 degrees, until the skin blisters off. All right, now I think our peppers are done. I'm gonna grab these little hot suckers. Yeah! All right, they look perfect. Put them in a bowl. I like putting a little plastic wrap over the top. That's gonna increase the humidity, and when they cool down, it's gonna make it really easy to peel. All right, now we're back. I let the red bell pepper sit about 20 minutes, now they're cool enough to handle. I'm gonna take the pepper, I'm gonna peel the skin off. Comes off nice and easy. See how easy that is? I like to have two bowls ready because I don't want any seeds. All right, now I've peeled and seeded all the peppers. They're all about thumb width apart. I'm gonna take some garlic, I'm gonna thinly slice that. One per pepper, basically. Put those right there. Take a little extra virgin olive oil, like that. Nice healthy pinch of salt, and a little parsley. And then I'm gonna mix these up by hand, and I'm gonna do this for about three or four minutes. When they first named peppers, uh, it was Christopher Columbus actually, and at the time, back in Europe, black pepper was all the rage and garnered a lot of money. So. Even though this is part of the Caspian family, in fact, a fruit, uh, they still named it peppers, just so it would have a better market value. All right, we're coming to a close here. I'm gonna take my peppers, put them right like that. Great for a little cocktail party. Put some of that garlic right on top. I'm gonna take a little parsley just for decoration. Sprinkle that on there. And there you have it, roasted red peppers. Until next time, remember all you need is good ingredients, some care, and a minute of your time, and you can eat like me, Patrick Legans, the wine geek, food freak.
My name is Yvonne Reed. I am the owner of Babies of the Bush, wildlife art gallery and gift shop and conservation center in Mountain Village, Colorado. The center was started in order to support the South African Peace Park's concept of joining existing conservation areas that straddle national borders across Africa. This by means of elephant migratory corridors, thus ensuring biodiversity, supporting socio-economic development, keeping strong, healthy genetic gene pools by allowing animals to crossbreed, and a financial stable tourist industry for all countries in Africa. The upliftment of Africa guarantees the safety of our wildlife. The protection of Africa's wildlife now means Africa's lifeline for the future. Please join me in raising funds for the protection of the African rhino and elephant under the auspices of Peace Park South Africa. Visit Babies of the Bush and see how you can help. Welcome back. Thank you, Yvonne, and all you who are watching. If you get an opportunity in your mountain village, please go visit Babies of the Bush. It's a great store and a good cause. I am here now with Troy Schumacher, who is the director and choreographer for the Ballet Collective. Troy, welcome. Thanks for coming on Channel 12. Yeah, nice to be here. Um, so you've got some workshops and performances coming up at the Michael D. Palm Theater. But before we get into that, can you tell us a little bit about your experience in Telluride when you first came here, how often you've been here, and then we'll move into what you do for a living. Okay, so this is our fifth summer coming to Telluride. And when we came for the first time, myself and my colleagues from New York City Ballet that make up the Dancers of Ballet Collective, we were all just completely, you know, in awe of this place. And we had one of the most artistically productive weeks that we've ever had in our entire careers. Oh, cool. Yeah, because you just come here and you're surrounded by this amazing space. It's and inspiring. Yeah, it's inspiring. The first uh, time we came up here, we stayed a few days on Wilson Mesa. Then we came in and we stayed at Element 52, which is very um, supportive of the residency. And it's just a fantastic place to be. It's mm -hmm. our fifth summer. And each time we come here, we spend a week at the theater. And it's for this really important stage of the ballets where it's between the studio and performance. You need to put it on a stage and you need to get lights and you need to get a little bit more distance mm -hmm. and perspective. So mm -hmm. the Palm allows us to do that. And so we spend every day for a whole week working in the theater, putting the finishing touches on new works and then we do a performance at the end of the week. Very cool. And, and so what was the genesis for coming to Telluride in the first place five years ago? So we had a couple of um, common threads that just came together. Uh, one of our board members uh, had recently purchased a condo, condo at Element 52. Uh -huh. And we also had a dancer, Harrison Cole, who grew up in Telluride. Uh -huh, of course. And so we approached the theater and they were really excited about the idea. And it's kind of this unique thing, like New York City Ballet Dancers coming to Telluride mm -hmm. to do this very uh, unique and distinct product um, that is, you know, critically acclaimed in New York City, but it also gives us a chance to show our work to the community here, mm -hmm. which is amazingly um, sophisticated, so. Very cool, and, and so you're the director and choreography, and I'm presuming you yourself have a dance background. Are you a dancer? I'm a soloist at New York City Ballet, oh, okay. and this is actually the first year that I'll ever be performing in the performances here. Normally, I'm just mostly in the audience uh -huh. directing the production, um, but this year I just, I decided to dance a little bit, Good. just to do something Great. a little bit different. How, p how perfect. Yeah. And is it, are you finding it, uh, you and the other dancers, challenging to be at this elevation? It definitely is. There's definitely a period where we're all kind of a little bit more out of breath mm -hmm. than we normally are. We just came from a week of performances, and so a lot of us are in pretty good shape, but there's definitely, even for us, a strong acclimation period that okay. we have to get used to, and we're just drinking a lot of water and just, you know, pushing through quite a bit. And what are you guys doing when you're not actually dancing or working on choreography or the direction? What are you doing in your spare time for fun? Uh, so we go out and explore. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first year also my wife and I, we brought our golden doodle here. Oh, nice. So we've Perfect been- Perfect place for a golden doodle. Yes, we've been running into so many doodles and we uh, took her up on the gondola yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's only our second day here, but everybody was exploring in town, going to the vintage sh store, <laughs> doing various shopping, so. Mm -hmm. Good. And then also just 
you know, it's a chance for us to form a little community right. and work together and right. do some team building while we're here. And, and what is the actual schedule? Tell, tell us what you're going to be doing here and, and what the dates are. So we are going to be performing four ballets on Saturday night. Uh, one of them is a very large project that we've been working on, and it's actually an evening length work uh, that we just won a large award to work on. So in June, we spent three weeks workshopping that. And that's a collaboration between myself and the um, author Karen Russell, who's an acclaimed work of, uh, writer of fiction, and also the composer Ellis Ludwig Leone. So this is actually a evening length work that we're actually condensing into about 25 minutes here. And we're putting together a concert version, a suite of dances from that piece. And then we're also presenting a work by this great European choreographer named Marco Gurka. And then a work that we workshopped last summer. And then also, last week I was uh, just talking with my wife and we decided like how fun would it be to just create something from scratch here in Telluride. That would be very cool. So Are yes, you gonna do that? Yeah, so yesterday I started creating a new duet for myself oh, and her. fantastic. And we, uh, we have rehearsal for it later. Oh and right. we're just, um, you know, I just thought it would be a, a fun kind of project for me and a gift to the community yeah. here just to create something brand new in Telluride. Oh, that's such really exciting. Yeah, it's a great place to nice. create. Nice. So we're in the studio every day from, yep. uh, you know, late morning until early evening, working on these various pieces. Uh, each day we make a little bit more progress. And, uh, and is the public welcomed in to watch these rehearsals, or is that off limits, or how does that work? So, yes, there's a couple opportunities. Um, on Thursday from 3 to 5, uh, everybody in the community is welcome to come and watch one of, of course, our rehearsals. Of course, the one thing I should remind our audience is they're actually going to be watching this on the Friday after that Thursday. Oh, okay. So this goes live this Friday. We're pre-taping on okay. Tuesday. Okay. All right. So, and then um, on... Uh, Friday morning, uh -huh. there's um, also going to be a master class okay. for any student or adult in the community who likes to do ballet. Um, uh, my wife, who's also a soloist in New York City Ballet, will be teaching that. And I think that there's another class on Saturday morning oh, cool. as well um, that's going to be taught by Valerie Madonia. And then we have our performance on Saturday night. So Perfect. it's a jam-packed week. Okay, great. Thank you. And the performance on Saturday, when, when is that? Uh, it's at 7 p.m. at the Palm Theater. And how long do you think it'll run? Uh, I think the running time is about an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Hey, Troy, thank you so yeah. much for coming on to Channel 12 and telling us about what's happening with uh, the Ballet Collective. It sounds really, really cool, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thanks. We're so happy to be here and hope to be here yeah. many more years. Pleasure. Come back many times, please. All right. Thank you. Now let's join a group of Telluride fourth graders from the intermediate school who are talking to us about the importance of drinking water from the tap here in Telluride and not using disposable bottles. We're the Earth Guardians. We guard the Earth. You can be one too if you really, really want to. So help us spread awareness all around the world. Yeah, you know it. So come on and show it. Yay! I'm Bjorn. I'm Lucia. I'm Marilyn. I'm Elodie. And I'm Chase. We're the Earth Guardians of Telluride. Today we're going to be talking about how plastic is bad for the environment. Quiet on the set, scene one, take three, action. Hey, sorry to bother you. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about plastic bottled water before you take that home. Is that okay? Sure, I'd love to. Did you know that 64% of bottled water is actually tap water? Wow, that's a lot! And you're paying 2,000 times more! Can I interest you in a $10,000 sandwich? And it's really bad for the Earth. Yeah, you're right. I bet it uses a lot of fossil fuels and could end up in the ocean hurting sea life. Yeah, the energy used to make plastic bottled water bought in the U.S. every year could fuel a million cars. We're going to get one of those cool reusable water bottles. It'd be cooler if you did. Right over here. I'll show you. Wow, so many people are drinking out of plastic water bottles. Yeah, I wonder how the tap water is in Telluride. Yeah, we should ask an expert. Who, me? I'm no expert, but I know one. Stan the Waterman. Hi, we're here with Stan the Waterman. Thanks for coming, Stan. Hello. What's the source of our tap water? Well, we have two sources in the town of Telluride. We have Blue Lake, which is a high alpine above Treeline Lake, and also Mill Creek, which is halfway up the valley floor. How safe is our tap water to drink? 
Our tap water is really safe to drink. It's uh, source water, so we're the first ones to use it uh, after Mother Nature gives it to us, and it's really pure and clean to begin with. Then I filter it and add disinfectant, and that's it. What happens when we don't get a lot of snow? Well, we go into drought and we have to conserve water by using less, uh, irrigating less, and washing your car less. Do we need a filter on our tap? We really don't. We filter everything out at the water plants, but if you don't like the taste of chlorine, you can use a charcoal block filter to get the taste of chlorine out of the water. How much does our water cost? Well, on average, it costs about a penny for 10 gallons compared to about a dollar for a bottle of water. Thanks for joining the Earth Guardians. Uh huh. Three, sixteen, three, take two, action. Hi, we're here with Joyce, the new town engineer. Thanks for coming, Joyce. Absolutely. We were wondering how the, t the tap water gets to our taps. Well, we clean it at all the water treatment plants, and then it travels through miles and miles of pipe underground, and then when houses get built, they'll usually request to tap into that, our pipelines, and then that's how you get water into your sinks, into your showers, and everything else that we use it for. Okay, yeah, cool. How long do you think the pipes are? Well, it runs through the whole city and we've got probably over 20 miles of pipe. Cool, and the last question we have is, how does our tap water get cleaned? Well, we clean it at the plant and then we add chlorine, which is a disinfectant. And so when it travels through the pipes, it protects us from anything that might get into the pipe system and be bad for us. Okay, cool. Thanks for coming, Joyce. No problem. <laughs> oh, look at that delicious food. <laughs> I wish people would stop using so much acid. Drink Calyride Mountain Spring water out of your tap. Welcome back. That piece that we just watched was produced by Tayride TV. Tayride TV works with a lot of local students and we also work with all kinds of community organizations both in the nonprofit and the for-profit segment. Uh, part of our mission is to engage with the community and create local community content. So if you're interested by all means give us a call at 970-708-3839. Tellerite TV is a public access channel that depends on public support. We want to give a shout out to a few of our generous supporters, the towns of Telluride and Mountain Village, the Telluride Foundation, and the Telluride Ski and Golf Company. Now let's look at a profile piece on the Telluride Music Store, and then after that we're going to travel back in time just a little bit to 2015 to the AHA School for the Arts Annual Art Auction and singer-songwriter Jewel. I'm dominating. I'm so excited to be one of the new owners of Telluride Music Company. After working for six and a half years in the shop, myself and a business partner bought the business from the uh, former owners who had owned it for 20 years. Telluride's been really good to me and the Telluride community's really allowed me to make this a special sort of opportunity. We sell acoustic guitars, that's really what we're all about. And we do a lot of other instruments as well, violin, mandolin, and banjo, but guitar is our focus. And in addition to that, we sell CDs, we've just pushed into vinyl. We're committed to inspiring and pushing and cultivating the music scene in town. We're doing a lot of night events and bringing in a number of local musicians and musicians from all over the country and in some cases the world. And we also have a vigorous lesson program. We do everything from really advanced music theory lessons to just the beginning ukulele lesson. Going forward, we're happy to be a part of the musical framework in Telluride, and I'm just excited to carry on a 25-year Telluride tradition in Telluride Music Company. Whether you're a musician, a music lover, or someone who's just maybe interested in getting started, please stop by and see us. Hope to see you in the shop. is a hopeless jumble 
And the raindrops tumble all around Heaven opens a magic lane When all the clouds darken up the skyway There's a rainbow highway to be found Leading from your window pane To a place behind the sun just a step beyond the rain Somewhere over the rainbow Way up high There's a land that I heard of in a lullaby and somewhere over the rainbow bluebirds fly oh, if birds can fly over the rainbow why then oh why can Someday I wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me and troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops that's where you Somewhere over the rainbow, bluebirds fly. If birds can fly over the rainbow, why? Then oh, why can't I? Someday I'll wake and rub my eyes. And in that land beyond the skies you find me I be a laughing daffodil and leave the silly cares that fill my mind be Birds can fly over the rainbow why then why can't I if happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow why oh Enjoy the show. I can't thank you guys for uh, your generosity. This is a really wonderful art school. I've always been so impressed with how uh, progressive Telluride is uh, with the arts and so many other uh, cultural advancements. You guys are very lucky in such a small town and my son is very lucky to be able to be here and come to the school. Um, well, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me think about it. 
Maybe I'll do something fun. Uh, uh, this is the first song I ever learned. I learned it when I was uh, probably five. That's why I didn't have friends in kindergarten. Because learning to yodel is just not attractive. Hi. That was a cool shot. I felt good right up the nose. Super sexy. Thanks. Hope it gets published. <laughs> okay. Up on a mountain so gay and so free There is a young man, he's waiting there for me And out on the lake we'll drift with the tide And hear those chime bells ring And chime bells are ringing Oh, lady Mocking birds are singing your little lady Well, moonbeams were shining as I kissed him there. Night birds were singing, perfume filled the air. And each little star, but it twinkled above. As heaven smiled on our love, oh, chime bells are ringing. Oh, lady, mocking birds are singing. Oh, lady, oh, hush. Little lover, or a little up on a summer's eve. You sickos. God bless you all. Have a great night. Thank you, you Jewel. Jewel. Thank you, Judy, and all the rest of the team from AHA. Have a great night. Thank you all for coming. Good night. Welcome back. That was a great little showing of Jewel from the 2015 art auction. So I am happy to have Bob Bear here in our studio. Welcome to RITV. Thank you. Although you're pretty familiar with these studios, yes, you come I, in here quite a bit. I don't have far to go, do I? Um, so tell me a little bit about how you ended up here in Telluride and your story. Well, actually I'm from Colorado. I grew up in Aspen, Colorado. Okay. I moved there when I was about 10 or 11, something like that, and lived there for a long time. I went to the University of Colorado for a while. And at some point, and I was in the CIA at the time, we bought a hotel in Uray called the Western Hotel. Oh, okay. That was pretty much dilapidated mm -hmm. and haunted as well. So oh, we what? fixed that up and so lived in Uray part time, came there a lot, and eventually went to Silverton, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Bought a house there to do AT skiing. And then once it, the whole town became motorized, we moved to Ophir. Okay. And been there ever since? Been there mostly, yeah, between here and Washington. All right. So tell me about your work in the intelligence community. Um, it started as, you know, pretty much a prank. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was in, I, was in, I was going to Berkeley at the time. And I had a roommate that I was staying with, actually sleeping on his couch. And we got up one morning, and there were all these scandals in the newspapers about the CIA. It mm -hmm. was like, you, you would think it was, you know, the ninth circle of hell. 
And so we thought it'd be very funny if this Aspen X ski racer applied to the CIA. And uh, yeah, and I, I, I just figured, said no, they, I'd get a letter from no, don't, don't contact us again, go away. <laughs> and um, I got hired. And I said, well, you know, what could go wrong? And <laughs> I'm sure and, plenty, yeah. right? Well, plenty. It started out badly. Um, they did the security clearance. I was living in Berkeley at the time with two anarchists. Oh. And I was studying Mandarin at the time. And I remember there was this knock on the door. It's like a second floor place. And there's a knock on the door. And I went down, and there was this guy in a suit, which you didn't see in Berkeley in the 70s. The suits were... Especially living with two anarchists, and you're like, we are in trouble. <laughs> and I, and I, he said, I'm here to talk about Bob Bear. And he, he was at the wrong address. Uh -oh. He was at my address, and he got it confused. And I remember at the top of the stairway, stairwell, there was this, um, I'd put this poster up of Mao Zedong, and I'd written in the bottom in Chinese that the east wind blows red. And, and, at the t and uh, the, one of our roommates had a boa constrictor, <laughs> which came out of the door at the time, was the top of the... So I thought, well, here, here goes it. And then they hired me, you know, and then I, I showed up. and Fascinating. You know, a couple of weeks later, I was jumping out of airplanes, the machine guns, and blowing stuff up. And so it's like being James Bond. <laughs> it was well, like being James Bond, but it was, it was all a surprise to me. You're jumping out of airplanes with machine guns sounds pretty exciting. Yeah. So, I did, you know, I've trained for two years um, and then sat for two years on a desk, something like that. It was totally a seven-year training, you know, course in India. Um, you know, going to Area 51 to do training like that, and, and you know, just all over. Um, were you stationed anywhere specifically? All the Middle East. All the Middle East, okay. I was in India, Beirut, Syria, the Sudan, Iraq, a bit of the time, Morocco and Paris. Oh, wow. For 21 years. And then you would come back to your Ray and Ophir Silverton for some retreat time? Well, what I did, I took my ways with me, and that was backcountry skiing, like when I was in Iraq during the war. Mm -hmm. They thought it was nuts going, showing up in a war with skis, you know, <laughs> to, to ski on the Iranian border. So, you know, what can I tell you? It was good cover, though. Yeah. That's you awesome. ski in Lebanon, and there's a place called Faraya. No, it was, no, was some place oh, the sea. It was by the sea. Anyhow, there was, in the morning, the artillery would start. The Syrians would be bombing the Palestinian camps in Beirut, and they'd uh -huh. be firing the artillery over the range, over the shoe range. Yeah. And you'd be w at the top of the ski slope and these shells would be go hurtling over your head. Oh my gosh. And you could watch them hit. So that was, that was a different way to go skiing. <laughs> a little excitement. Yeah. You're like, these are not Avi bombs. No. <laughs> they definitely weren't. Um, so tell me about what you've been doing now. You work with CNN and other channels as well? I work for CNN. Um, I write books. I do scripted shows. Mm -hmm. We're, in fact, I'm starting a show here on Thursday. The showrunner's coming up. To, it's a scripted show. We're going to be shooting in Istanbul. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Um, and tell me about your books. How many books have you written? I think it's six. The first one was turned into a movie called Syriana, and George Clooney played me. Yes. And Did that debut here for a film festival? No, it oh. was in... Um, Venice. Okay. No, and that was in, wait, where was it? No, Berlin. Berlin and New York. Okay. Yeah, that's where it was. I can't remember so long ago. <laughs> I remember hearing about it, so I thought yeah. it was in here. Great. And so you are in Telluride full time now? About s seven months of the year and okay. between here and Washington. Between here, here Washington. Yeah. And so when you're here in Telluride, you come to the Telluride TV studio and tap into the CNN news feed? Yeah, right here we <laughs> have a feed that goes over the internet. Uh -huh. It's HD, mm -hmm. TV quality. Come in here, I'll come on the weekends. I was here on Sunday talking about uh, the shooting in Los Angeles, the hostage thing, like an hour and a half. Wow. Um, how does it usually work? Do they contact you? Are you a regular, weekly? It's when they need you, you know, and it, it sort of goes in waves, and it depends what the issue is. Mm -hmm. I norm if there's terrorism, it's terrorism. If it's Russia, you know, c something comes up, I can, you know, bring it up. So do you, do they usually consult you for things specifically or kind of just terrorism in general, the community, intelligence community in general? It, it's on a need. It's cable TV. Come on. <laughs> it's like the other day I was talking about the divers in Thailand. Oh yeah. I don't dive and I don't go in caves, <laughs> but I, you know, I they wanted somebody to say something that sounded 
semi-intelligent. I'm not sure how intelligent I sound, but it, they keep inviting me back. <laughs> Filling airtime, so right? They must be sounding good, right? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Maybe they're desperate. Um, so what is the current thought in the intelligence community with what's going on with our administration, the Russia scandal? and Well, we've never had a president like this who's attacked the FBI and the CIA like mm -hmm. this ever. It's never happened. It worst days in McCarthy, it's never happened. So you have a president on one side whose every act he has taken looks like he's somehow beholden doing the bidding of Russia mm -hmm. against the intelligence community. The intelligence on Russia is absolutely perfect. It's great. It's wonderful. They've mm -hmm. got names, times, dates. It doesn't get any better than that. So for the president to say this is all a hoax, you know, what do you do? I mean, the intelligence community deals in fact. Yeah. Even in Iraq, they de dealt in fact in the sense that the intelligence they had on Saddam Hussein was so bad that they were reluctant to send it to the White House. Mm -hmm. and the, but the White House said, we want it anyhow because we want to go to war. It's a nuance most people don't get. Mm -hmm. But um, both the FBI and the CIA, they deal in fact, and this president doesn't. So that's a scary thing for the intelligence community. How is it coping? Well, you can't cope because you've got a president that's dealing in emotion, mm -hmm. political emotion, which has nothing to do with fact, you know. You just say these are good guys, bad guys, and it, we don't, you know, we don't know what to do. Yeah, everyone's just kind of at yeah. a loss. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to catch more of Bob Bear, Telluride TV will be hosting an event August 8th or 9th at the Wilkinson Public Library. So stay tuned for more information on that. Now let's join Barbara Glanzing for a calming breath practice. Hello and welcome to this mini yoga series in beautiful Telluride, Colorado. My name is Barbara Glansnick and today I want to show you a very easy and calming breathing exercise that you could do really at any time of the day if you feel like your monkey mind is not quieting down at all. This mini yoga series really provides you with a bunch of easy stretches that you can do at any time, especially when you're running out of time to run to a yoga class. As always, I want you to focus on the breath, so we're going to breathe through the nose only. And also, I really want you to move with care, so honor where you are today. Okay, so let's get cracking. Lie down on your backs, either on the mat or on the floor, if the floor isn't too cold. Then I want you to bend the knees, bring the heels wider than your hips, toes turned in, so you can already feel the inward rotation of the thighs. You don't have to bring your knees together, so they don't have to touch, but maybe in the direction. Then I want you to flip the palms to the ceiling and tuck your shoulder blades under so you can feel the heart space opening. Tuck your chin. Some people may have to put a blanket underneath there so you don't feel like your head or your chin is sort of going backwards. We want to have a tuck chin and so there's space in the back of the neck so that we can breathe freely. Then, Gently, gently, gently allow the exhalation to come to empty. Then with your inhalation, draw the breath all the way up into the heart space, really expanding the space around your collarbones. And then again, exhale. Again, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. When you're ready, you're going to roll to your right side and slowly, slowly, slowly come up to a seat. This is a very simple breathing exercise that you could do anytime. If your head position is correct, you can actually watch as your heart raises with your inhalation. I recommend doing this 
between five and ten minutes every day it increases your lung capacity rapidly and it also really quiets the mind one of the most important things is to keep the inward rotation of the thighs and to gaze towards the nose tip thank you so very much for practicing with me today have a wonderful day namaste Welcome back. I wish that I could say that we have a lot more in store for you on this week's program, but sadly, Almost Live is... Almost over. However, if you missed part of the show, never fear. Almost Live airs every day, morning, noon, and night on Cable Channel 12. And you can always catch us on Facebook and our YouTube channel. Until next week, when we'll have a brand new episode of Almost Live, we'll say bye-bye. See you next time. <laughs>